<laughs> I think I'm going to enjoy flying this one FPV. Into us from Gearbest, and I have to confess I've already opened this one because I didn't know what it was. It is the Fury B VX140. Now this one is from Gearbest, it's just about £90, so it's cheap for a three-inch quad as well, and it's available with a number of different receiver options. I've actually got the FR Sky one here, but there's also a Fly Sky and a Futaba and also plug and play option available. So quite a few different options for you there when you order it. Links to this are in the video description. So if you want to take a look, have a click. So presented uh, quite roughly, everything's just slung in the box, no prettiness here. But hey, as long as it's the quality that counts, not necessarily the presentation. So starting with the quadcopter, there it is. Nice uh, looking quadcopter, feels very robust. We'll have a look at that in detail in a minute. We've got a little bit of heat shrink, interestingly on its own there, and some tie wraps as well. We've got a set of props as well as a spare set of props. So you get a set to mount on it and also then four spares. There's also some instruction manuals here as well on the flight controller and the various inputs and outputs, as well as a little manual here on how to bind the FR Sky receiver. Now, really nice to see that it comes with an official FR Sky XM receiver, which isn't a bad little receiver. It's not diversity, but it doesn't give too bad range. So that's what comes in the box. Let's have a look in detail at the quad. So this is the VX140 from Furaby, which of course is Gearbest's own brand. Now it does feel like we are paying a little bit in the strength of this quad through weight. So let's quickly just put it on the scales and see how much it weighs. And it comes in at 126 rounded up. So it's not exactly lightweight and it's not exactly overweight, but it's certainly strong. We've got four mil 3K carbon here, so you're gonna struggle to break this thing. That's really, really strong. On the top, we've also got a carbon plate and on the bottom, a secondary plate as well. Uh, and they look to be about one and a half mil as well. Now an interesting design element to this quad is that the arms seem to be modular and they're sandwiched between these two carbon plates. So if you do break one of these arms, you can literally undo this and just replace that one element, which is quite an interesting idea. Inside the main stack here, we've got an F3 fly controller, which also has an inbuilt OSD, which is very nice. Below that is a four in one B controller board, which also supports BL Heli and D-Shot, which is great. And there's also a VTX in there as well. And there's actually a little button, which is accessible just there, which you can press to change the channel. The VTX that it's connected to is a 5.8 gig, obviously, 40 channel, and it's a 25 milliwatt, but switchable to 150. So that's nice, we can get a little bit of extra power. So that might help us actually in working with this small dipole antenna. Now the antenna for the VTX is just loosely mounted out of the top here. It's not structured particularly well, and I think that is quite vulnerable. So I'd be inclined to put some protection around that antenna, and it is also only a dipole antenna so I'm not expecting incredible range or quality of signal from that but we'll see we'll give it the benefit of the doubt on the flight test at the front here we've got a 600 TVL camera now it is a CCD camera not a CMOS camera and it's got 130 FOV now despite it being orange it's not a run cam so <laughs> don't be mistaken to think that that is a run cam unfortunately it's not it's also worth noting that by undoing these small screws on the side of the camera, you can tilt that to change the angle if you need to. Now on top of the stack is our XM receiver, which oddly is kind of just <laughs> loose, which is bizarre. Now we're gonna to have to obviously secure that, but I guess that's why you get the zip ties and also the heat shrink in there so that you can do that and then mount the antenna nicely as well. Binding these little receivers is very easy as well. There's a little button on the receiver that you need to press and hold whilst you power up that receiver. That puts it into bind mode. We actually went through that process on our previous review of the F100, the awesome F100 it's called. So have a look at that review if you need help in binding these receivers. So on the ends of these incredibly thick arms, we've got the speed controller cabling, which luckily is on the top, not on the bottom, and it's just zip tied to the frame. The motors here obviously are brushless and they are 31,000 kV motors. They're actually branded with Ready Toski. I've never heard of that brand before. They don't look premium, they look quite cheap, but it's about the performance. So let's see how they perform in the flight test. 
The kink underneath the quad, not a lot to say really, but again, I'm glad that there's nothing exposed like with the F100. There are no wires, no speed controllers under here. There are lots of bolts and nuts, however, and Allen bolts. They're all very, very much protruding. None of them are assessed into the frame, which I think is a bit of a shame, especially seen as they've actually rounded the carbon, um, but they didn't flush mount these bolts. So they are gonna potentially make a bit of a mess if you land this on some hard sort of surface. There are lots of them, and I think that probably accounts for some of the weight of this quad. Looking at the rear, it comes with a big buzzer, and I'm glad to see that. I'd rather have a big buzzer than no buzzer at all. There are also four LEDs there, and a large XT60 connector. Now, you might think it's odd to see an XT60 connector on a small quad like this, but the speed controllers are rated for up to 25 amps and 5S. Now, I'm not sure you'd want to connect a 5S battery to this quad. It's more suited to a 4S battery and certainly under 1,000 milliamps. So be careful before you go hooking up a battery to this. Make sure you do your measurements to make sure you don't blow anything up. Also worth noting that it doesn't come with a battery, but that accounts for the price and batteries are cheap. So that's a quick look at the quad. The next thing we'll do is bind the receiver and then we'll have a quick look in beta flight before we get to the test flight. So with the props removed, let's hook the quad up to my PC via USB and take a look at the beta flight configuration. Firstly, the calibration is nice and level already, so we're going to leave that as it is. The FR Sky XM receiver is connected to UART3, and so we've got Serial RX enabled there. Next, the configuration tab and DSHOT 600 is already set, but DSHOT 1200 is also there as an option. Also, oddly, motor stop is enabled, which we don't want because we'll be using air mode, so we'll turn that off. The gyro and PID CPUs are running nice and fast, we're going to leave that as it is, and we'll set a craft name just because we can. The receiver settings are correct as per our SBUS XM receiver, and I'm going to toggle off black box and SD card. They're always enabled as default, but we don't need them, so to reduce CPU overhead, let's turn them off. Battery monitoring all looks good, so let's save and reboot and store our minor changes that we've made. Failsafe is set up nicely on stage two and it's set to drop, which is exactly what we want for safety. And looking at the PIDs, they're all factory and we're gonna leave them as such for this test flight, but there is perhaps scope for some tuning here. Now onto the receiver tab and with our transmitter turned on and the battery connected, we can see our channels moving accordingly. However, despite an FR Sky receiver, the channel map is set incorrectly. And so we'll need to amend that to the Tyrannis map that now gets our channels moving as they should, including our auxiliary channels as well. The modes tab is completely blank, and so we're gonna add arm first, then we'll add air mode, anti-gravity, angle, horizon, and beeper, and we'll configure them all next. Firstly, air mode, which we only want to trigger in rate mode, anti-gravity will set the same as well. Angle and horizon I always like to add to my quads, even if we're generally flying in rate mode, and so I'll assign them to my mode switch on aux 2. Finally, the beeper set to aux 3, and I'll use that as my lost model alarm. And with all that saved, it looks nice and is working exactly as we expect. One final step, I always like to have my OSD on a switch so that I can toggle it on and off if I want a nice clear view. So I'm gonna add that as well to auxiliary 3. And a quick look at the OSD and I'll turn off the elements that I don't need and enable the more important indicators such as current draw and fly time, as well as of course RSSI. The LED strip is already configured from the factory, we can play with it but we're going to leave it as it is for now. And very finally, a quick check on the version currently installed, 3.1.7, which is a little bit out of date now so at a later stage we may firmware update it. Now you might have noticed on the receiver tab that channel 12 was fluctuating. And that's because the XM receiver is sending us back an RSSI reading, which is the signal strength between the transmitter and the receiver. At the moment, our OSD can't interpret that channel and so is just showing zero for RSSI when we look through our goggles. That of course is not very useful. To get that RSSI displayed live in our OSD, we need to make a few changes. On the receiver tab top right, you'll see a drop down called RSSI channel. We're going to click that and change it to number 12. Then click save, and if you now look through the goggles, assuming that you've enabled RSSI on the OSD tab, you'll see a live reading. 
To test that it's working, move the transmitter towards and away from the quad, and you'll notice that the reading fluctuates up and down accordingly. Also, of course, if you cover the antenna to restrict its signal. Not bad for a tiny receiver, which only costs about $10. Anyway, let's get flying. So Andy RC is always moaning about the weather, and rightly so. It's bloody cold in England right now, so I can't imagine what it's like as far north as he is. But we're out and we're ready to test the X140, which is a lovely looking quadcopter from Furibee. And uh, this one's come from Gearbest and links to it are in the video description. So today I'm flying it with a lovely battery that I found from my website called Cool Toys. And there's a link to these in the video description. This is the cheapest that I could find in the UK, a really good price. It's a Tattoo, it's a 75C pack and it's a 4S 750 milliamps. So it seems about right for this quad. It's a good fit. Uh, and a good battery and it's less than 15 pounds as well which is good now the one thing i would say about the battery strap on this quad however is you do need to add some rubber or silicon so that it grips underneath the quad so that when you strap this tight it's a good tight fit because it is a little bit loose uh, but it's a test flight and i haven't got anything with me so we'll just have to give it a try so transmitter on let's get the battery connected and we're going to start with a nice loz flight first of all Oh God, it's so cold. <laughs> now there is quite a bit of wind today. Flutter up and we're up in the air. Um, wow, the first thing that's immediately noticeable having flown two inch quads for the last uh, few reviews, this thing is really quick and powerful. And I think three inches are really good size as well. Two inch, yeah, it's micro, but a little bit too micro, I think. Three inch is a good compromise between uh, the larger scale and being able to fly the smaller ones. So this is a good compromise. Lovely stable hover. Let's go for the punch. Here we go. Three, two, one. <laughs> yeah, that's nice. Props make a lovely sound as well. So that's really, really good. This has got lots of power. Let's do that again. I think this will actually take a 5S um, and maybe it could actually make good use of it with that. Just to get a little bit more out of that might be quite nice do a quick little fly around oh it's got a great presence in the sky this and unlike the little quad that we test flew last time this one's got plenty of power so that when you are nearing the ground you can actually recover it quite nicely loads of power loads and loads of power wow flies really really nice so let's try a little bit of acro. <laughs> the wind caught me by surprise then. <laughs> yeah, it is a little bit windy here, unfortunately. That flies really nicely. Yeah, it's not, um, not ridiculously quick at full pitch, full stick. Um, but of course you can alter that quite easily in piece of flight. Oh, it's so cold, my hands are numb almost. Uh, and your rate, nice and quick, very quick. Yeah, very nice. So yeah, this is a this is a really nice feeling quad. Flies brilliantly, really, really brilliantly. Those lights look nice on the back as well. <laughs> I think I'm going to enjoy flying this one FPV. So let's do that right now. <laughs> Time for the FPV test. So we're going to go straight into rate mode, of course. We'll be keeping an eye on our flight time. Fresh battery in there as well. And first of all, just look at that camera. I mean, that really is beautiful quality. And you can really see the advantage here of the CCD camera as opposed to the CMOS cameras. What a difference. I mean, it's just such better quality. Beautiful colours, really, really nice colour saturation on there as well. Looking absolutely beautiful. And this thing just flies brilliantly. Absolutely brilliantly. Considering we've got that tiny little dipole antenna on there as well, it's hardly given us any breakup at all. Getting great reception there. And I would say that this is probably one of the best small scale quads that I've flown this year. And certainly when you consider the cost of it, look how quick it is as well. 
not seen a lot of dip on the punch out actually. So now bear in mind this VTX is switchable 25, 25 and 100. I thought that we were set actually to 25 for this, but with this signal, I'm really just really impressed. And the camera is just absolutely great. Absolutely brilliant. So normally when I'm testing these quads, I kind of have an idea of which, you know, I really enjoy flying and which I'll probably keep. Um, this is one that I'm definitely going to be keeping. Um, I mean, this is the first time I've flown it. These are factory PIDs. I'm not a tuning expert, but I, I can see already that by a little bit of tuning, this could be absolutely brilliant. Uh, it's already brilliant. <laughs> And look at the you know the flight time we're getting as well. I mean, um, this is a 4S. I don't want to run this pack much lower than 13 volts realistically, um, but flight time-wise, it's just you know brilliant. And that camera, I mean, look at that into the sun. Absolutely beautiful. And it sounds lovely in the air. It's actually quite quiet. These props are really really nice. Oh wow. Just beautiful. I really love this quad. Now I'm starting to feel a little bit of sag on the punch out here. So save my batteries. And these are lovely tattoo batteries, as I say, from a website called Cool Toys. Have a look in the video description for them. Uh, I'm gonna bring it in. I keep saying I'm gonna bring it in a land actually, but I'm only at 14 and a half volts. Um, oh, look how quick this thing is. I want to look after these batteries, so I'm going to land it now, but what a quadcopter. So I've actually got a coupon code for this one as well. Make use of that. So with the specification of it, it's got a buzzer, it's got an on-screen display, and it's got a really good specification, but I would say one of the core features with this, what a camera and the VTX as well. We're not getting really any break up here. And we've tested the range significantly for a quad of this size. So yeah, really, really impressed. So I'll put some positives and negatives up on the screen for you now. And if you enjoy the review, comment below, give us a thumbs up, and of course, click subscribe. Thank you very much for watching, guys. This is a keeper. <laughs>